Good evening. You're on the air with AM 800 WRTH, broadcasting out of... And thank you for tuning in for tonight's show. This evening, let's talk about a modern classic of supernatural experience. No, we're not discussing Ghost Story by Peter Straub. This isn't something like The Others, but it's about something other than that. Something online, and something that's been online for a long time. It's not often a hobbyist-style website hangs around for more than a few years. Like a karma chameleon, they come and go, and then disappear without a trace. But sometimes, you'll find a devoted crew of people, passionate about something they're doing. And their website will hang on for longer than normal. Maybe five years. Maybe ten. Maybe twenty-four. The World Wide Web has radically changed over the quarter of a century. But if you know where to look, sometimes you'll find a spot frozen in time. A website powered by static HTML pages with no fancy database on the back end. No PHP, no C Sharp, not a trace of JavaScript. Did you know you could still build a website using only HTML? As a guy who used to do a fair bit of web design and engineering, I often wondered how much trouble we cause ourselves with all of these secondary and tertiary technologies. Is it worth all that work, just so we don't have to write the HTML code ourselves, when there's a PHP engine to do it for us? Folklore is an important thing in the realm of the supernatural, and if there was ever a website that could be a bit of folklore, indeed a folk hero, all on its own, then the Shadowlands would be that website. The Shadowlands, still available at theshadowlands.net, where it's lived since 1994, is the work of Tina Carlson and Dave Giuliano, two well-known paranormal researchers. The Shadowlands stands as an archive out of time. It hails from an era of visitor counters, offers to sign the online guest book, and web rings. If you don't know what a web ring is, kids, go ask your parents. As I said, the Shadowlands has been online since 1994, and the website looks straight out of the late 90s. You've got those amazing 90s website tropes with the tiled background, animated GIFs, and broken functionality where things have ceased to work because the technology is simply no longer there. But look beyond that, and you'll find something quite special if you're into this kind of thing. The Shadowlands contains volumes of testimonials and stories about cryptozoology, UFO phenomenon, and mysteries of the unknown. But for a guy like me, it's the pages and pages and pages of ghost stories that originally brought me there. In the late 90s, I had a laptop computer that probably weighed, no joke, 8 pounds. This was long before the days of ultra-portables and iPads. I'd copy and paste text from web pages on the Shadowlands and then read them in bed, the laptop sitting next to me. You could say it was my first e-reader. The website refers to the collections of ghost stories as pages, and there are currently 13 of those pages. Say what you want about Triskaidekaphobia, the biggest reason there are 13 pages of ghost stories is because once there were only 12, and now there's 13. But really, these pages could be called volumes, as each page contains sometimes hundreds of stories, it seems. Each one has an email from someone who found the website and felt the need to tell their own tale. While the stories claim to be true, well, You can make up your own mind about that. This is, after all, the supernatural that we're talking about here. But more than that, it's the internet. The stories range from well-written and erudite to all-caps shouting and poor grammar. Dave and Tina seem to have just copied and pasted the stories right out of the emails they received. Which is another thing. The stories, they come from email. The email addresses are (laughs) right there for you to see. 
This was a more innocent time before spam took over the world of SMTP and you needed Google, Microsoft, or some other service to look at your email and separate the signal from the noise. There was a time, ladies and gentlemen, and genders outside and in between, where you could have an email address and every single email you received was something from someone you knew, not some Russian bot hawking penis pills and UK lotteries. The Shadowlands also introduced me to the concept of electronic voice phenomenon, or EVP. EVP is another example of signal-to-noise, where you're recording the ambient sounds of a location and hidden within the static, you'll hear voices or sounds that weren't there when you recorded them. The belief is that a spirit can manifest their voice on such a recording, and it comes through as a whisper over the static. Sometimes you hear whatever you might be told to hear. But sometimes, just every so often, the voices are clear and completely unexplained. The Shadowlands had one of the first, if not the first, collections of EVP files online. Today that sounds weird. Anyone can host audio files on their website. Heck, there's podcasts. That's, that's all they are, is audio files on the internet. Back in the 90s, hosting audio online, well, that was some high-tech, cutting-edge stuff. I listened to all these files at one point or another. After the first few, I tried to ignore the text next to each one explaining what the recorder heard when they played it back. Suggestion is a powerful thing, and I wanted to hear the EVP myself and see if I heard the same thing. I'd have to say that, most of the time, I did. Then there were the photos. The Shadowlands had, at one point, the premier collection of spectral photos on the net. Some were taken during investigations, others out of random chance. Unfortunately, that collection now seems to be gone. When I tried to load it while researching this, I get no pictures and only a placeholder error that simply reads, Form Object. But there is yet some good in this weary world. And after hitting up the Wayback Machine at the Internet Archive, I found a snapshot of the site with the photos intact. These pictures fascinated me. Some still do. Some depicted the classic orbs that are associated with so many images of ghostly activity. But a few of them, the real gems of the collection, seem to capture full-body apparitions, unexplained mists, and faces in the darkness. You owe it to yourself to take a few minutes to peruse the collection. It's worth your time. I've been interested in ghosts since I was a kid. You can blame the pop culture of the 80s for much of that. It wasn't until I was in high school before the subject became, for lack of a better term, more real to me. We might get into all of that some other time. But I'd like to take a moment now to thank Dave and Tina and the thousands of people involved with the Shadowlands for firing my imagination, offering inspiration, and even, I suppose, for the occasional sleepless night here and there. And if you're looking for a good time, there's one to be had in a comfortable corner of the web that's just a bit out of its time, just like the entities within its text files. Thank you for listening, and have a good night.